What's going on, Badger Nation, and welcome to the PPC Den Podcast, your source for all things Amazon advertising, tips, strategy, and techniques. Today, we have a very special episode, as they all are, to be honest. Uh, We have my friend on the show, Adam Heist. Adam, what is up? We were introduced by our mutual friend, Stephen Pope, weren't we, a couple months ago? We were, man. Thanks a lot for having me on, and uh, kudos to uh, Stephen for the intro. It's... uh, you know, your people in the space kind of all find their way to, to gravitate together. And it's uh, good that we all met each other through uh, through Stephen. But yeah, man, thanks for having me on. Oh, yeah, right on. And you are based in Utah, which is a beautiful place. Uh, what do you like to do in Utah? Are you a big outdoorsy person? Everyone I know from Utah is outdoorsy. Yeah, so uh, I'm actually, I've been in, been in Utah for four years. So I'm originally from Canada. I spent 14 years in Texas the flatlands, the concrete jungle of, of Houston, Texas. Oh, wow. So yeah, I've been here for four years and uh, absolutely love it. So I, I live in Park City, uh, which is up in the mountains. So for context on what I like to do in the in the summer, kind of spring, summer time frame, I'll go mountain biking pretty much every day. So we basically have 400 miles of single track from my garage, which is pretty wow. badass. And then <laughs> in the great. winter, uh, I like to see if I can ski, you know, 50 plus days a year. Uh, kind of similar thing. I leave my garage and it's about eight minutes to sitting on the ski lift. So uh, kind of outdoor paradise here and try to take advantage of it as much as I can. Oh, that's amazing. You know what? I When you mentioned the the Canadian, uh, I heard it for a second. I was like, oh, there's the <laughs> accent, I think. Man, I've got such like a bastardized accent. You'll hear me say A and y'all. And I mean, it's, uh, I've kind yes. of got a, a potpourri accent from my uh, experiences over the last 20 years. Yeah, yeah. Well, we have a really, really interesting topic today. One that I believe is only going to become more important. Uh, And it's a topic that I believe Amazon has always implicitly wanted everyone who sells on their platform to do. And they've made some recent changes over the last few, I mean, weeks, really. I I believe this was a summer 2021 thing, which is really driving external traffic to your Amazon listings. Uh, And that that recently taking that implied, like, hey, send us your external traffic is now explicit because they added this brand referral bonus actually rewarding off Amazon traffic to your Amazon listing. So we were going back and forth about certain topics to talk about, ones that were really exciting to you. And this one is, I know, going to be really exciting to our audience because we talk a lot about Amazon ads. And if people are skilled in Amazon ads, launching some things on Google ads is going to be a really nice transition. So I'd love to have you share your experience with it, uh, of sending off Amazon traffic to your listings. Uh, and when did this idea sort of first come across your desk basically? Yeah, that's a great question. And and maybe we'll kind of peel the onion back slowly and kind of start, start at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So uh, I want to say it was probably, it was at least a year and a half ago, maybe a little bit before, where kind of the Facebook ads to many chat, like heavily yeah. discounted rebate, like launch campaigns. I started to see the the cracks in the armor, so to speak. And I'm like, you know what? This is the gigs up. I mean, it wasn't quite up at that point, but the for me, the writing was on the wall just because of the quality buyers that were coming through this. So I'm like, you know what? I got to reinvent my launch playbook. So the, the impetus for it originally was really launches. And around the same time, I started to learn about the California Privacy Act. There's something in Europe where you can basically call on any basically software company, product company, anybody that has a website and say, hey, I want you to give me all the data you have on me. There's a similar rule through the California Privacy Act where basically anybody in the US can also request of of websites and providers. So I basically initiated that request via the California Privacy Act with Amazon for my buyer account. And it was a treasure trove of data. It was, it was frankly, like you kind of know that they track everything, but when you see it with your own stuff, it's a little bit like disconcerting. Wow. So they had 28 zip folders uh, on my personal Amazon Crazy. buyer account. And it was Crazy. Alexa stuff, Amazon Prime stuff. But there was a particular folder that had basically 10 years of all of my, and my wife who uses my account, um, a history on, on Amazon as a shopper. So every search I did, every product I added to cart, every product I bought, Every IP address I searched from, every hardware wow. device I searched from. Um, I mean, it was it was insane. But one of the interesting things that I saw uh, on like again column whatever XZ or whatever it was like a pretty far right column was they they had this section that was all on external traffic. Mm-hmm. So number one, if the source of the search originated from outside of Amazon, they had a, a column there that tagged that actual site, and then mm. they also had a column that tagged whether or not 
that traffic was from an ad or not. And, oh, wow. you know, so that was like the first inclination where they're clearly tracking it. Mm-hmm. Um, and around so they the same knew the time, difference. Uh, uh, so yeah. they knew the difference whether you clicked on like uh, organic Google result versus a paid Google 100%. result. Wow. Yeah, 100%. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so that was the first light bulb moment where I'm like, okay, well, they're clearly tracking this. And it makes sense if you think of it from Amazon shoes in the sense that, you know, they've got 160 million or whatever it is, prime users in the US. Um, so they've got a lot of them, but there's still folks that aren't always shopping on Amazon. And so mm-hmm. if you can disrupt somebody's online behaviors when they're doing something else, bring them to Amazon, whether or not they even convert, they've got additional data to retarget. They've mm-hmm. got new search queries that they can use. They've got additional information on you that they can leverage to basically monetize it. And I'm sure that they kind of have like a monetized dollar value for folks that come from an external source that weren't shopping. Yeah. So that was the thesis. I'm like, you know what, let's let's just kind of put this out there. And then at the same time too, I started doing a lot of research on on kind of Google SEO stuff. And if you if you kind of notice, if you type anything into Google, it's very rare to find an Amazon link. Mm-hmm. Um, and the reason is, I believe, is that Amazon and um, Google don't really like each other, as you can imagine. Mm-hmm. You know, Google is the world's search engine. Amazon is, at least in most Western countries, the product search engine. And so mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that Google does not reward Amazon traffic as much. It's basically Walmart product links and other stuff. So I think Amazon started to realize both the value of external traffic, and they've definitely been tracking it, and the fact that they're not getting any SEO love. So mm. in my view, and, I, I, and we can kind of get into how this is rewarded with, with organic rank, but they heavily reward traffic that originates from an external source. And if it originates from an external ad that they themselves didn't have to pay for, because they also run ads on, on mm-hmm. your product's behalf oftentimes, they're gonna reward you for that in, in, the, in, in organic rank. So I've started playing up this thesis really over the last year and a half, and it's just, especially for launches, and there's a whole bunch of other uses that we can get into, but um, it's absolutely a, an insane weapon in the arsenal to drive performance on Amazon. Yeah, you know, even from even without the technical reasons to do it, like the marketing-based reasons to do it, just from a straight-up business perspective, it makes total sense for Amazon to develop systems to reward external traffic. Like if they could take a sale away from a Shopify store, they're gonna yeah. love that opportunity. Amazon loves putting their tendrils as deep as as they could possibly get into the economy. So it makes total sense, and I, I'm, and I mean, I believe it. But it's it's like, wow, that they were tracking, even if you're as just a common consumer, they were tracking like if your traffic was external or not, which is crazy. Yeah. And it's also funny that you mentioned the Google SEO, too. Uh, I do somewhat follow Google SEO updates, and I feel like every so often because I have friends that run like Amazon affiliate sites where it's like it's a blog about, um, you know, what notebook you should have (laughs) and like they'll just review notebooks and then there'll be a link to go buy it on Amazon and Amazon affiliate sites that try to rank on Google are always like hammered every Google update they're like oh you know you need to change up your Amazon affiliate site you need to make it more robust is that an indirect way at like (laughs) <laughs> hurting <laughs> Google search results that have Amazon links to it. That's interesting. Push them down. Yeah. Uh, maybe. So you saw all these things coming together. And can I ask really quick too, you started to see the cracks in the armor of the many check. Cause I remember when that was happening, that was yeah. super duper hot. Yeah. Um, and I think it's, it's great. It's a great lesson to be aware of that. Like anything that's sort of hot, like a, a hot trend, maybe maybe is a little gray somewhat um, in terms of like white hat, black hat, a little gray hat. Um, what kinds of things did you see in the, in the many chat funnel? Uh, just cause I, I'm, I'm curious on what that experience was like, like what you saw, what made the, your sort of spidey sense tingle a little bit that you're like, eh, maybe this isn't going to be a long lasting yeah. strategy. Yeah. I mean, first of all, it was kind of like, it's kind of like that feeling like if you were like read someone's diary, like it just didn't feel (laughs) right. Like I had that, like this doesn't feel right. Like the whole time. But the thing Mm. is it was so freaking powerful that it was just like, like why not do it? But it never felt 
Right. And it always felt fleeting. So I kind of knew the gig at some point was going to come up for various reasons. And I always played it really down the middle with stuff. I didn't do 100% rebates. I didn't ask for reviews. Yeah. Um, I, I always like to inject plausible deniability if you're ever kind of participating in that gray territory. Um, so I never, I, I always kind of knew it was going to be fleeting and never really felt great about it. Um, but I basically ran a lot of these, like how I did kind of position mine was doing like product research based funnel. So I basically say, Hey, we're doing this for product research. We want to find out more about mm. how you're viewing our page. And we will give you basically a 50% rebate at the end of it. So I would usually do about 50% rebates. But the problem that I started to see and where I kind of started to see things go downhill is just the quality of the buyers. Like it was clear that the Facebook pixel and their algorithm was picking up these very rebatey deal seeker type personalities. And you could just kind of mm-hmm. tell by looking at the Facebook profiles, like you weren't yeah. getting the best of the best in terms of consumers. And I really started to see you know, like just like the fallacy and the, and the people that were starting to come through the funnel and, and coming through. So I think that was like the first inclination. And then I just kind of saw everybody and their mom doing it. And I'm always a, a, a believer in do the things that are incrementally more difficult. They're not crazy hard. Most of the stuff in the Amazon space mm-hmm. that's difficult, quote unquote, you can figure out in 30 minutes or an hour, but like zig when other people are zagging. And that's always been my, mm-hmm. my thesis. So I think it was a combination of the, the buyer quality that was coming through was clearly not great. It was starting to dull a little bit in terms of impact. And I started to see people doing it in very nefarious ways and, and, mm-hmm. and almost every seller was doing it. I'm like, you know, I got to reinvent the playbook to stay in front of this. Yeah. Um, because at some point the gig's going to be up. I'd rather get off the boat before it starts sinking. And that was kind of um, some of the early signs for me that made me look at external traffic. I, I love that we went over that because I think you can compare something like that to what we're talking about today, which is something that Amazon has explicitly said, yeah. we like this. Yeah. So I think, and there's ways to measure sending Google ads traffic to your Amazon listing. So I think that's a fantastic because so many people are like looking for like the next thing. And I yep. think a, sh- a sharp business person, a sharp marketer is like looking at it and it's like, what's the longevity on this? Is this, you know, gray hat? Is this black hat? Like these things probably aren't going to be around for a long time. Am I trying to build a flash in the pan type company or a company that's built to last or a company yep. that uh, I'm hoping that gets acquired one day? Um, so now we're at this point in the story where it's you actually did run Google Ads traffic to your listing. Uh, would love to hear about like how you set up your first campaigns. Like what was your keyword selection look like? Like what was the price comparison? I'd love to hear about like how it got started. Yeah, hundred percent. So um, I think what's I guess important to realize is is that. It was kind of weird when I first did it. Like when you go into any new platform, you feel uncomfortable. And I think right. that's a really an important kind of, I mean, when you signed into Facebook for the first time or, or Gmail, like there's always this weird feeling. I remember when I set up my first Amazon shipment, I was like legitimately stressed out because I'm yeah. like, shit, like what is this? What you know, like, so anything I guess is mildly complicated the first time you do it, but then the second, third, fourth time you do it, you're just like, oh my God, that was easy, right? So I think mm-hmm. Google Ads was very much the same for me. So I kind of went down, like we all do, went down the YouTube rabbit hole. And most of the strategies I learned from really good digital marketers actually aren't Amazon sellers. So I basically actually started kind of looking at people that aren't even affiliated with Amazon and, right. and studying and learning how they set up Google Ads. So that was kind of my my platform was finding YouTube ads um, that looked at Google ads, but nothing at the time was really out there for, for Amazon sellers. And then just kind of went through the steps and like, Hey, how the, how the heck do you set these things up? So it literally takes 20 ish minutes to kind of set up your account and tie in all your payment details and then kind of get off to the races on your first campaign. Um, my general approach and kind of the major reason that I'll use Google ads is, is typically it launches. Um, I definitely believe that everything is on the line the first 30 to 60 days of a product's life. I mean, if you don't get that right, all of the time doing product research, all of the time working with samples and ordering samples from China, refining the product, shipping it here, which is a pain in the ass now, as we all know, with with shipping delays and stuff. Like all of that work is for naught if you don't swing for the fences the first 30 days. So a, a cornerstone for me with external traffic is every single launch campaign needs to have this. You've got to push the chips in at launch because it's such a critical time in a product's life to get right and to get those those seedlings of organic rank going and get that engine going, get conversion going on Amazon pay-per-click. You've got to get all those things right. 
So basically, you know, it takes about 20 minutes. My general approach typically is in line with the keyword research that I've done on Amazon for a particular product. So I'm looking at all of the other ASINs in the space that have done really well, reverse engineering their keyword performance in terms of organic rank, and then prioritizing those relevant high volume words that successful ASINs in the space uh, are succeeding on. And I take that list. Usually it's about anywhere from 15 to 50 highly relevant terms. So I don't like go crazy with keywords mm -hmm. when it comes to Google. And I'll kind of take that that 15 to 20 words and basically do an exact matched campaign on, on Google. Um, they've got their own Google Keyword Planner where you can look at all the keywords that people search for on Google. I always say that, you know, 70% is good enough when it comes to the Amazon space. You can, like using Pareto principles, you can really uh, have a, a, a really impactful um, performance by just focusing on the basics. So that's it, man. I take 15 to 20 of the words that are highly relevant that are succeeding on Amazon. I plug those in. I don't really care about Google Keyword Planner. I plug those in right. and I run anywhere from a $5 to $50 a day budget. And then in concert with Amazon pay-per-click and the other things that are important to do uh, to scale sales performance and rank on Amazon, just kind of unleash all of those things and magic happens. Yeah, and I also want to give a quick plug too. Uh, you were grateful enough to actually highlight some of this process in a YouTube video. Uh, we'll link to it in the show notes too, um, but you can, also, you can just Google Adam Heist, H-E-I-S-T, Adam Heist, Google Ads, search that on YouTube and you should be able to find Adam's video and his channel. Uh, by the way, I really enjoy your channel. Uh, I think it's great. And, it, man. uh, so yeah, so we'll link to it, but you actually outlined this process, uh, in a, you know, detailed YouTube video. The, the YouTube video is about like, what was it about 20 minutes long or so? Yeah, I think it's like 20, 30 minutes long. I mean, literally yeah, yeah. if you, if you've never even gone into ads.google.com before, um, and you're a complete newbie, you could pretty much be off to the races. I think in 30 minutes with this, um, if awesome. you've got a fleet of keywords, it's pretty easy to set up. Right. Um, so starting with those core keywords, you know, the best ones from Amazon ads, um, some of the, you did some competitor research too, just, you know, almost sounds like you have this core pack of terms that you take over to Google ads, you launch it, um, with that budget. And in terms of, so that, so you, you obviously do that when you first kick things off during a launch. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about like impact that you saw afterwards. Um, I just want to sort of talk, just talk about the setup. So you would set this up basically when you're launching a product, would you like turn it off after sort of the first 60 days? Would you let it ride? Like or how else did you incorporate Google ads into your marketing mix? Yeah, it's a great question. So again, kind of, you know, simple, simple being the focus is, is mm -hmm. kind of my approach. So typically if I'm, if I'm doing a launch, it's really rudimentary setup. I, I might set up a handful of campaigns if I've got a lot of words, but I'm not like doing single keyword campaigns in Google or, right. or some of the more sophisticated stuff. I'll usually just dump them in, in like 15 keyword tranches in, in exact match. I, I personally don't typically do Amazon attribution when I'm doing a launch simply because I don't really care if it converts. Like the goal mm -hmm. is not conversion. The goal is not ROI on the Google ad spend. The goal is to send external traffic signals and tags and traffic to my listing that Amazon's going to pick up and realize, hey, th th these guys are, are interesting to me and we need mm -hmm. to reward them with organic rank. So so I, I keep it pretty simple. Usually the, the, the launch campaigns run about three weeks. Sometimes I'll run it longer uh, or shorter, kind of depending on what's happening with budget and other things for the product. Um, but launches are, are really kind of flash in the pan, short burst campaigns. Uh, and I really don't care much about performance other than sending signals in concert with the other strategies that are important at an Amazon launch to drive rank. There's two other use cases uh, in my view for external traffic across the board, Google ads specifically. And I would just say too, of all the, the traffic sources you can look at, Google ads is probably the easiest to implement and the most impactful. It doesn't require graphics or a whole mm -hmm. lot of like brilliant copywriting. And again, I, I break down some stuff in that video. It's pretty simple to set up. Mm -hmm. um, the second case to use it is, is what I would call a relaunch. So um, you, we'd like to think that every launch and every product is just a, an amazing success and lives on you and sit back, forever. Relax. 
Yeah. But uh, <laughs> at some point in a product's life cycle, you're going to need to bring life back into it, whether you've just kind of haven't been paying attention to it much or pay-per-click's gotten incredibly expensive and you can't really make the math work cleanly on driving all the traffic you need with Amazon pay-per-click. There's instances where for particular keywords or products, you kind of want to bump it back to, to where it was before or you want to kind of revitalize right. it. Um, in those cases, again, it's very similar to a launch. Typically requires a little bit more time, much like a concerted pay-per-click push on Amazon would take. Um, but those are usually about 30 to 45 day pushes where it's like, hey, here, here's some places that we've lost ground. And the cool thing, once a product's actually been out there, you can now look at your search term reports. You can look at your conversion rates. Uh, you can look at your your brand registry, uh, uh, Amazon search terms to see what your click share is, conversion mm -hmm. share is, and, and know where the gap exists. Uh, right. and, and identify those words to bring it up. So the second um, kind of use case is kind of a re-rank. Um, and it's very similar to a launch methodology. It's just really doing a heavy, heavy concerted push uh, with traffic and, and channels across the board. And then the third one, and this is one where I actually do use Amazon attribution for. So those first two I really don't because they're more flash in the pan are what I like to call maintenance campaigns. Mm -hmm. um, you can set these up very inexpensively. I'm talking five bucks a day per campaign on Google Ads just to slowly drip feed this external traffic mm -hmm. to your listing um, with a focus more on ROI based stuff. So the cool thing about at, uh, Amazon attribution, which in and of itself has, has had kind of a, I would call it a, a you know, tarnished history, let's just say. It hasn't oh, yeah. always been great. I've got words. I've got words for it. <laughs> uh, I would say Google Ads is probably the best with, which is kind of the good news. So it's not perfect, but uh, especially with this new program where Amazon's actually going to uh, basically credit you 10% of any converted sale that comes from external traffic. It's great for that. So you basically set up um, kind of a, a recurring campaign and that's where you do more, I would call it pay-per-click um, oriented strategies, which is like, I actually do want to optimize the bids. I actually mm -hmm. do want to see my ROI and my conversion like shake out right. such that I'm not losing a lot of money. Um, but those slow drip feed campaigns, again, it's not super expensive. It could be five, 10 bucks a day. And you're slowly drip feeding that using Amazon attribution to cull the words and the bid strategies that make sense to optimize the economics. So you're basically getting um, sales that make sense from an ROI standpoint, and you're getting that slow feed organic uh, signals that Amazon will reward you in terms of organic rank. So those are the three yeah. use cases. Awesome. Yeah. The brand referral bonus um, is one of the most exciting ingredients in this send to Google ads traffic to your Amazon listing uh, yeah. recipe that we're putting together. The fact that they credit, you know, actual cash and will deduct that from, they don't give you money. They deduct it off future uh, invoices that you are paying them is so interesting and it really just tells you that if they're deducting you know 10 percent, like how like they're obviously making profit with you sending external traffic yeah. so like you can really tell how valuable it is to amazon to do this so so exciting and one thing that comes up which i know a lot of people uh, it was very popular at one point in time. Uh, I haven't checked back in on this topic, but in terms of the URL that you're putting in the Google ad, is it just the direct product, you know, amazon.com slash, you know, DP slash ASIN, or is it some sort of specific like super URL uh, where it's like you go and search the word and then you, you know, grab the link from there first or some crazy thing like that. Uh, are you just sending the traffic directly to the page? Yeah, so this is my theory on this. And again, there, there's people that you know, may disagree with this, but um, somewhat for simplicity and somewhat because of that data footprint that I realized, that I kind of brought up at the, at the top of this conversation, I use direct shoot links from the main link. Mm -hmm. And then there's something called site links. So if you ever go to like a Google ad and then there's like an about us page and a products page yeah. and a shop page, there's these links underneath. I will use canonical URLs on the on the site links, the ones down below, but the mainstay link, like the masthead link that most people mm -hmm. click on, I always use a direct shot um, click through link to the actual listing itself. Um, the, the reason being on this is because of the tags that Amazon has on the back end, I believe that they, they clearly they track, and I know that 100% fact, and I know that they track if it comes from an ad. And I believe that the reason that they track that is again, because they want to reward people that are paying to send traffic to their Amazon listing. So right. I don't want to muddy that with some other right. link or confusion point, um, mainly from a data tracking standpoint. Then I think there's also the user, the user kind of experience standpoint is, is I want to have the least amount of friction possible. 
Um, again, because the goal other than the maintenance campaigns isn't really necessarily to optimize conversion. Like I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to send as many eyeballs to my listing as possible from external sources. Some of them will convert and I want them to convert, but that's not the reason I'm doing it. If I send them to a lander, number one, I lose the the data attribution from Amazon in terms of tracking um, mm-hmm. where they came from, which was a Google ad. But I also inc- I reduce the number of people that are actually going to make it to my listing because there's increased friction. Um, mm-hmm. So for those reasons, I do direct shot links and I don't mess around with keyword stuff and all that. I, I just keep it clean and simple. Uh, and it works, so I don't mess with it. Yeah, exactly. You know, using the lessons from the many chat days, right? They, yes. they could be applied here as well. So yep. it makes total sense. You know, you have to ask yourself, like, what would Amazon prefer? And like, they probably just want that direct link, send them to the page and have them buy. Um, yep. So that's awesome. Now, in terms of results that you n- noticed, uh, obviously, I want to ask about organic rankings on Amazon. Uh, hear about how maybe those were impacted. I also want to hear about like in that maintenance when you are doing it with Amazon attribution, you know, how you think about those metrics, like your Google ad spend and then the revenue that Amazon attribution says is generated from that. Um, So I'd love to hear you talk about the rankings and the revenue component to this whole thing. For sure. So I think I would say at the start when you're doing like a launch campaign, it's difficult to isolate. I've done some A-B tests, which we'll get into, but it's difficult to isolate when you're doing heavy push pay-per-click. It's a brand new product and you don't know how good it is, frankly. Like some products you could do nothing on and it's going to rank well. So it's a little bit of of like how is the suit made on launches is a little bit difficult. Um, I had done one test where I basically didn't do any Amazon pay-per-click. It was actually a supplement product where I had really high cost per clicks. On that one, I actually ran Reddit ads a lot and we did some stuff with Twitch influencers as well. Um, But I was basically looking for cost per click arbitrage. Like where can I find the cheapest cost per click and get the external attribution? And that launch... Uh, basically, we started, we, we pumped the brakes on Amazon pay-per-click. And when we did that, it just took off on rank. Now, was that explicitly the ads? Was it because the photo was good? And click? I mean, I don't think anybody can say definitively. And I think if they do, they're probably not being uh, intellectually honest with you. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've done that test. And then on the maintenance mode and our relaunch mode, I've done similar tests where I'm like, hey, let's just hold pay-per-click as we have do our regular you know, bid optimizations like we normally would, everything else. The only thing we need to inject, and this thing's been around for a year, let's just inject external ads and see what happens. Right. And that for me is a much more definitive data case where you can clearly see over a two, three week period, those organic ranks increase uh, across the board for everything that your listing's optimized for. Cool, um, yeah. So those ones I've seen, yeah. But is there like a you know mathematical certainty on the percentage of actually? Att- I mean, no. Right. I, some of this is directional, and you got to kind of just say if it's working, keep doing it. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I think that perspective and the con- the conclusion is as precise as anyone could get, and anyone exactly. who says that it's definitive, you know, this is going to be the input. This is, will be the exact output. Uh, it's impossible to say. Yeah. Um, you know, I always think that even if you had every single data point, you'd be overwhelmed with the amount of data that you, and it'd be almost impossible to draw a conclusion from it. Yep. Um, so really it, it's like trend analysis. It, it's it's good to hear that you've had that experience because this is a implementation, this is a technique that isn't the most complicated. So just yes. running external traffic. Okay, so notice the ranking boost. And then how do you think about it in terms of, like actual spend and actual revenue generated? Yeah, so for maintenance campaigns, um, first of all, like for launch and kind of relaunches, it's just like you got to do an investment, whether it's doing a hard push on your bids on Amazon pay-per-click or you want to do influencers or whatever your strategy right. is, there's going to be an input cost to it. And the end game goal is, is that you basically improve organic rank and then that facilitates uh, an ROI, but you, there's an upfront sunk cost. With mm-hmm. maintenance campaigns, it's it's much more similar to an Amazon pay-per-click world, which is what, it's not a cost in this case, but let's just use the framework. What a cost are you comfortable paying to achieve sales and to a, either hold or improve your organic rank? Mm-hmm. And I look at it very similar in terms of Google ads. Um, they're not going to convert in the same way that Amazon pay-per-click is, but typically the cost per clicks are going to be significantly cheaper. So it's just a math equation. I typically... Um, don't need to run break even on Google ads because of the additional benefits that you get 
from uh, external traffic. Uh, and I, I would not say that about Amazon pay-per-click. In fact, in some cases, if your conversion rate's bad, it's punitive to your organic rank. So not only are you losing money and not having ROI accretive um, cost per clicks and performance there, but you're actually hurting your organic rank and you'd actually improve your organic rank if you ran no ads at all uh, or ran at a much better ACoS. Um, I look at Google differently in the sense that you do get this external rank benefit. So I'll typically go, um, call it, if you wanted to use ACoS terms, I'll, I'll typically go about 20% more than what my break even is. The goal is to optimize for break even or better. Um, but you know, because you're not going to convert quite as well, we'll typically have a little bit more leniency in terms of ROI performance on Google ads with, with, uh, ongoing maintenance attribution campaigns. Yeah. A lot of really experienced wisdom that you just mentioned. Um, Loved the thing that you said about if you are struggling with conversion rate and you just want to crank up Amazon PPC, it could actually be hazardous to your health (laughs) because you're sending, you know, more and more traffic to a listing that Amazon thinks is converting below average. Very wise right there. And so being able to understand uh, it seems like you do an exceptional job of like understanding where all, and how all these gears are turning in, in this overall marketing machine. So um, just wanted to give you major props on that. Uh, and then of course, with the Google ads, ROAS, uh, and you know, one interesting thing too, um, this is sort of my interpretation of reading the tea leaves on Amazon, but I've always believed that Amazon knows if external traffic is coming into a listing and they'll know that it's not going to convert the exact same as native Amazon traffic. And they, they don't factor when, when Amazon thinks of like a product's conversion rate, I'm almost sure they're looking at it like native conversion rate of like on Amazon traffic. Uh, and they'll put external traffic in a different bucket of analysis so that even if your Google ads traffic converts at 7% and everything else on Amazon converts at 10%, it's not as if that's like penalizing you. I think Amazon sees that 7% coming from Google ads and says, okay, we know that Google ads converts slightly lower. We're not going to penalize this listing for like sending lower converting Google ads. We're actually going to reward it for sending any external traffic because we wouldn't have gotten it in the first place had it not been for this advertiser. Yeah. And I mean, here's my thesis on that particular point, because I think if you look at Amazon pay-per-click discreetly on the platform, they want to send the traffic to the listing that's most likely to convert. Mm -hmm. And they're going to charge you a higher cost per click if they don't think you're going to, I mean, they'll take your money as an advertiser if they think that mass right, but they typically want it to be a higher converting term. I think with external traffic, they really, they, they don't necessarily care if that person that visits Amazon from your link or from your external traffic source actually converts on your product. Because a couple things that happen that are monetarily valuable to them, mm. um, really discreet from actually buying your product are, you know, there's 160 plus million Prime users that may not be a Prime user. They may have now adopted a new Prime user and that helps them in their arms race and they probably have a lifetime value that Prime user that they attribute mm-hmm. to those people that sign up. So there's that value. The other value is, is that they now have data, even if that person is an Amazon Um, user already, they now have additional search query data and behavior analysis on that particular customer that enables them to send them emails that will make them convert, that will let them show display advertising to them um, natively across the web, that will enable them to promote products that match their their needs over time. So they're going to make money from that visit. And I think that they have a dollar amount for those external visits that they can attribute over time that they make independent of whether or not that person adds your product to cart or buys it. And so Mm -hmm. I think that the reason, you know, there's a monetary reason that I'm sure that they've calculated for the value of an external visit. Um, And then I think that there's also this arms race mentality that Amazon has that you've kind of alluded to throughout the conversation a couple of times, which is I don't actually mind going underwater for a little bit because I can hold my breath longer than you Google. Mm-hmm. I can hold my breath longer than you, Facebook. Like I will go to the deepest waters possible for the next <laughs> decade if I have to, because I want to be the place where anybody buying a product comes to buy a product. And if they have to sacrifice incrementally uh, by rewarding me, this you know Joe Schmo Amazon said with a little bit of organic rank to incentivize me to send that traffic, they're willing yeah. to do that. 
Um, but I think that they definitely have a monetary value on those clicks that come in. It doesn't necessarily need to be a conversion. Whereas Amazon pay-per-click is much more explicitly, what's my cost per click versus basket size versus AOV? Like, I think it's a little bit more financial uh, with Amazon pay-per-click. And I think there's other attributes that, that play into it from external traffic. <sighs> Said a lot there. A lot of good stuff. No, that's, I, this is really good intelligence for everyone to know. So thank you so much for sharing that. Um, so three big reasons to run Google Ads traffic to your Amazon listing. Use it at launches. Uh, use it when you are relaunching a product. Put it in maintenance mode. Um, the brand referral bonus is the icing on the cake. Uh, yeah. See some ranking improvements. Potentially get some good positive ROAS return on ad spend over on the Google ad side in the maintenance mode. And the one thing that I think people should do today is probably go to your YouTube channel, Adam Heist, look up the Google ads video uh, on YouTube uh, and actually start launching these things. Um, anything else that you'd like people to know as we wrap up this topic? I don't think so, man. I, I just think, uh, again, one of the things that's really served me well as an Amazon seller is do the incremental little things that 95% or 99% of Amazon sellers are too lazy to do. Mm -hmm. um, Amazon's an amazing platform in, in terms of what it lets people achieve with the flywheel, but it makes you a lazy, in my opinion, <laughs> lazy digital marker. Like you don't have to be as good as somebody who's just doing a DDC business. Yeah. Um, but if you implement even a bastardized version of what those DDC marketers do um, and, and a very like scratch the surface version, it has really impactful, amazing performance. So that's kind of been one of my ethos over the last couple of years is just like find those little nuggets of things that most Amazon sellers won't do, a la Google ads, implement them in your business. And I think that you really start to distance yourself um, from the competition on Amazon when you start to implement these things and they're not difficult to do, so. Yeah, you know, hopefully everyone listening can get past that, uh, that early, inertia or that lack of yeah. inertia uh, because it's not too much of a brain busting difficult activity in fact in the grand scheme of all the things that they'll ever do on amazon this is probably in the easy bucket uh, like it's relatively easy so could could this be one of the easiest best roi based activities you could do it's possible uh it's def it's definitely in the easy bucket um but Adam, thank you so much. Uh, super appreciate you having uh, you coming on the show. Uh, your YouTube channel is YouTube slash C Adam Heist. Um, so just go to YouTube, search Adam Heist. We'll link it in the show notes. Adam, thank you for coming on the show. Dude, appreciate it again. I uh, appreciate all that you do for the community too. And you're, you're a legend. In fact, I got um, a team of mine in the Philippines when they heard that I was uh, coming on the show. They were more than ecstatic. They're like massive Come fanboys on. of you. So they're just like, oh my God, you're going to be on Hand Badger. So dude, it was, a, it was an honor being on as well and appreciate what you do for the community. So cheers, man. Awesome. Have a good one. Cool. Cheers. Cheers.